Uh, this is John Black, super chemist, and we're here to talk about P2P synthesis in 90 minutes. Um, keep in mind, I've never seen this reaction or heard of it before like a week ago. I hate to, uh, I'm not the type of person who just looks up experiments and, and does them. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, I'm trying to learn all the chemistry, so I gotta do like an order. Um, so I don't like doing that. Um, but this reaction was so uh, easy or whatever, uh, it's unbelievable. Um, now, does it work with benzene and ac acetone? I, I don't know. I believe it does. And we'll go over the basics of it. Then I'll go over the versatility of it, the reaction, what I believe the mechanism or close to the me mechanism. And then I'll go over the exact instructions on how to do it. And I will go over, because these aren't my instructions, you know what I mean? I'm just looking it up. And uh, then I will go over things that I don't like that they're doing in the experiment. Uh, things I think they could do better or maybe change to see it make it be better. But anyways, here's the gist of it. Let's start the video. So hopefully this is how the reaction would go. Benzene would be your double bond. Acetone, and I drew the hydrogen on there because to show that it's acidic. Um, mix them together. Um, manganese 3 acetate or manganese triacetate, whichever you want to call it, is the oxidizer. And what's nice about this oxidizer is that and you have uh, acetic acid as your, your solvent. But the nice thing about this oxidizer is that it takes off one electron instead of taking off two um, leaving a free radical okay now you can see that hydrogen is is dangling off of there what the man three acetate is going to do it's going to pluck that hydrogen right off of there and it's going to take a a uh, electron with it so you're going to have a proton and an electron a full hydrogen and that'll be a radical, right? Not a proton. It's taking the proton and an electron, one electron. Um, so now you're losing a free radical. What happens to the free radical? One of the acetates takes the proton and becomes acetic acid. And now you only have two acetates instead of three, right? And the electron goes to the manganese, right? Now instead of it being at three, it's at two it's been reduced um, and what happens is you form this it's kind of like an enolate you know instead of it being negative it's uh, a free radical so it's like a free radical enolate and this wants an electron very 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 bad okay um, to fill its octet right where is it going to get electrons well there's a lot of electron density from this benzene a lot of pi um, <clears throat> electrons are floating above and below the plane of the molecule uh, so it can go in there and grab one of them right now I'm not sure how the mechanism goes or whatever um, but it detects the benzene and you can see there's a hydrogen because each one of these carbons has one hydrogen attached to it right <clears throat> so when this attaches now it has a hydrogen and this acetone attached to the same carbon. Where the free radical goes, I don't know. It might be over here, or it might be where I have it. Either way, it doesn't matter, because the same thing's going to happen. Another manganese 3 acetate is going to come along. It's going to grab a, a hydrogen a radical, you know, a proton and an electron. <coughs> And it's going to do the same thing. It's going to, the proton goes to the acid, one of the acetates to make acetic acid. And so now you only have two instead of three. And the electron goes to the manganese and reduces it from three down to two. <clears throat> and what are you left with? You're left with P2P. Now there may be a way to regenerate the manganese three acetate uh, by adding... Uh, potassium permanganate to the plant. Uh, that way you can keep remaking the, uh, as you make the MN2, you can oxidize it with the 
permanganate in situ. Um, but I don't know how to do that. I'm not sure. But it sounds like a good idea. Now, this um, reaction, um, I'll get into the exact instructions at the end of the video. But first, I want to go over some of the... Because um, this, this reaction is very, very versatile. Okay, it's like the Henry reaction. The Henry reaction, you can, you know, you, you do it and then you can do three different things to make five different things. You know, you can dehydrate it to uh, make a nitro alkene, you know what I mean? You can oxidize it, reduce it, a bunch of stuff to make different things. This is the same type of reaction. You can make a lot of things by doing almost the same reaction. Uh, here's an example. And also, I wanted to bring up that, uh, and I'm just guessing on this, but when you have your ketone, your carbonyl compound, right, and the manganese 3 acetate comes in to take off a hydrogen radical, right, which leaves a radical, I would guess that it would take it from the more substituted side, you know what I mean? It's not going to take it from here, went over here, you know you can uh, stabilize this radical over here more than you could over here, obviously. So uh, I'm guessing it always goes towards the more substituted side. But here's an example of, like, you can add these two chemicals together. You can make this with the double bond, or you can make it without the double bond. You can have your double bond, right, and make a lactone. Now, lactone, it's nice because it's a cyclic, you know, you're making a ring, you know. I, making rings and carbon carbon bonds, that's like the ultimate, uh, the holy grail of chemistry to me. And this, a lactone is basically just a, uh, a cyclic ether, okay? Um, so you can make an ether, I mean, uh, not an ether, it's a cyclic uh, ester, I'm sorry. Uh, so you can make an ester um, from a double bond, you know what I mean? And uh, acid. You'd have to have some acetic acid to be a reaction with that. And you can see the acetic acid is right here. There's one carbon, two carbons, and here's the carbonyl group. And uh, these bonds are going, that's where the double bond came. Double bond flipped up, flipped up. Okay, now here's a great example of the versat how versatile this uh, reaction is. Let's say this is your carbonyl, uh, your ketone, um, and you Put it in with the uh, MAN3. The MAN3 uh, makes this alpha oxo alkyl radical that we mentioned. See how it's got the radical there? Um, it reacts with the double bond, right? Now you have this over here. It attached, right? The two pieces attached. And <coughs> you could uh, make it go from there to where you're just getting rid of the free radical. You're adding another hydrogen radical to, to make a single bond, right? Or uh, you can add some copper to acetate into the solution, right? And you can uh, make that into a double bond. You know what I mean? Or you can have more MN3 in there and it reacts and it makes this a carbocation. And then the carbocation has two choices. It can either react here to make, uh, to add an acetate, right? To add uh, acetic acid, right? The anion. Or you can take a proton off and you end up with a double bond and a ring. See how versatile, there's like, just with the same chemicals you can do, <clears throat> you know, just by adding this or that, you can change your product uh, into many, many different things. You know what I mean? This reaction is very, very versatile. Um, it's, you know, it's not just to make uh, P2P. There's a million other experiments that you can do. <laughs> I remember how I said uh, in the one reaction... Waste. That it makes a type of an enolate uh, free radical, right? So this reaction works on uh, 
analyzable carbonyl compounds really well. Okay. Um, I just wanted to bring that up. But here's another example of why I think this reaction will work. Okay, on benzene. Okay. Um, here in Wikipedia it says aromatic compounds are useful free radical acceptors in MAN3 mediated coupling reactions. So, and it gives this example right here. And you can see instead of uh, a ketone, um, it uses a uh, an ester as the carbonyl compound. And you can see it gets 92%. This is the aromatic compound it gives an example of. Uh, alpha position. It's 100% alpha position. You get a 92% yield. Um, so it works really well. Um, you won't get that kind of yield with benzene. And acetone, I don't think. I think you'll get more like a 30 to a 40% yield. Um, but this is why I believe that it could work. Um, keep in mind, benzene, you know, reacts with radicals all the time in, in reactions, you know what I mean? Uh, like chlorination of benzene, you know, you make a free radical chlorine, chlorine grabs the proton and makes the benzene into a radical, and then that radical grabs another chlorine, and now you have chlorobenzene. <laughs> so it reacts with, uh, I can name 100 reactions where free radicals are attacking benzene um, and like I said aromatic compounds are useful in this man free coupling reaction here's an example 92% yield um, so this is why I do believe that the you know the reaction will work okay I also wanted to bring something else up well, that is in Wikipedia it says man three acetate may be used either as its dihydrate or as anhydrous. Um, so trying to get it anhydrous is no sense. It just sounds like extra work. If you wanted to make it anhydrous though, uh, when you make the MAN3, you would need anhydrous acetic acid and you would throw that in with your mixture of man to acetate and uh, you know your acetic acid and your potassium permanganate, permanganate and uh, you would make it dry you know what I mean you, you would make it anhydrous I it's hard to get you know what I mean and anhydrous uh, acetic acid so I, I don't, I, and, and you don't need it apparently because you can use the dihydrate. So I don't see the sense in making it that way. So this is a good thing. You can use the dihydrate. I just wanted to bring that up. Now I keep saying anhydrous acetic acid. And what I mean by that, I don't mean glacial acetic acid where you took all the water out. I'm talking about uh, acetic anhydride. Okay, that's when you link up two acetic acids together. That's the anhydride. That's what I mean when I say dry or anhydrous. Um, I really misspoke there. This would be the best stuff to have. Because from this, you can make anything. You can make anything below it, which would be this or this or whatever. Uh, or, you know, any kind of acyl transfer, this is the best thing to have. But anyways, if you wanted to make the salt dry, you know, instead of the dihydrate salt, you would have to toss some of this in with the glacial acetic acid that you're using as a solvent. Throw some of this, not anhydrous uh, acetic acid, but acetic acid anhydride. <clears throat> and then your salt, your man three salt, will come out anhydrous. Okay. I just wanted to clear that up. Most people probably understood that I was talking about the anhydride, but I just wanted to make sure. Get back to you on part two, and we will discuss the exact instructions. Ian's out. Have a great day. And always remember, science is great. And don't miss part two.